Davis now is also is talking to a former FBI special agent. He's a former FBI interrogator now offering a terrorism official. Do not have any theory. Operating officer. First up, he is a former FBI special agent. He's now chief operating officer for the Sufran Group. A global security consulting firm. All right, the interview tonight uh, is with former FBI counterterrorism agent Alif Soufan, who is a major part of the reason why we as a country know literally how we found out that Al-Qaeda was behind 9-11. The story of why he left the government since then is as amazing as the story of what he did in government. That is coming up. In May 1998, Osama bin Laden gave a press conference, not the most accessible press conference in the world. Bin Laden declared war on America again. Uh, only a few hand-picked journalists were there. But that press conference in 1998 did give us these fantastically overused photos of Osama bin Laden in a very fetching camouflaged vest sitting in front of a dramatic-looking banner. The banner he is sitting in front of is the flag of Al-Qaeda, black banner, white Arabic writing. In Islam, the hadith are the descriptions of things the Prophet Muhammad said or did during his lifetime. One of the hadith says, if you see the black banners coming from Khorasan, join that army. Even if you have to crawl over ice, no power will be able to stop them. When Osama bin Laden first declared war on the United States, two years before that 98 press conference, he signed and dated that first declaration of war, August 23rd, 1996, in the Hindu Kush mountains, Khorasan, Afghanistan. Khorasan is a historical region that spans part of Iran and Turkmenistan and Uzbekistan and Tajikistan and Pakistan and Afghanistan. Bin Laden was in part of Afghanistan that could be considered part of it, but he really wanted to be thought of as a guy in Khorasan. And he gave his group this black banner so he could make it seem like his army, his terrorist group, had been foretold by the Prophet Muhammad more than a thousand years ago. He did not want to be just Osama bin Laden, radical son of construction billionaire. He wanted to be Osama bin Laden, mighty warrior prophesied in the seventh century by the great prophet of Islam to lead a great army that could not be defeated. And that insight into the self-concept of Osama bin Laden and the seductive recruitment tactics of al-Qaeda gives us the title of Ali Soufan's new book, The Black Banners. Ali Soufan is our guest for the interview tonight. He's an American Muslim born in Lebanon, one of only a handful of Arabic-speaking FBI special agents. Mr. Soufan joined the Bureau in 1997 and brought with him an obsessive interest in al-Qaeda and particularly in Osama bin Laden. Mr. Soufan was still a rookie. He was in his first year at the FBI when the U.S. embassies in Kenya and Tanzania were bombed in 1998. When he asked his FBI supervisor that morning if we knew yet who was responsible for those bombings, his supervisor replied that it was still unclear, but, quote, I think it might be your guy, meaning it might be Osama bin Laden, the guy that Ali Soufan, as a rookie in the FBI, had already been all over. Two years later, al-Qaeda bombed the USS Cole in Yemen. Ali Soufan was in Yemen investigating that attack, chasing al-Qaeda, chasing bin Laden, when September 11th happened. Within a week of 9-11, Ali Soufan was face-to-face -face with the highest level al-Qaeda operative in custody anywhere. He was interrogating bin Laden's bodyguard and confidant in a prison in Yemen. That interrogation produced America's confirmation that al-Qaeda and bin Laden were behind the 9-11 attack. Within six months, Ali Soufan was face-to-face -face with the first high-value al-Qaeda operative captured by the United States. He was interrogating Abu Zubaydah. That interrogation is credited with identifying the mastermind and leader of the 9-11 attacks, as Khalid Sheikh Mohammed. But when you get to the part about that interrogation in Ali Soufan's book, Black Banners, uh, it starts to look like this. There's some writing for the first few pages, right? This is the Abu Zubaydah. You start to see a few more redactions. And then you get page after page of redacted text. There's something in here that somebody still doesn't want you to know. Let me introduce you now to Ali Soufan to explain why. The book is called The Black Banners, the inside story of 9-11 and the war against al-Qaeda. Uh, Mr. Soufan, thank you for being here. I know you could be anywhere for your first live interview, and I'm really grateful that you're here. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. Um, let me start with the specific and then broaden out. Who, who is responsible for the redactions in your book? Um, well, the redaction came from the agency, from the CIA. The book was approved by the FBI. Um, and when we finished the approval process with the Bureau, it took about three months, and it was reviewed by the Counterterrorism Division. It was reviewed by Information Security. We didn't have one single redaction. So uh, unfortunately, for some reason, uh, some people at the agency thought that uh, there is a national security need 
in uh, redacting a lot of the things that you showed. But, but you never worked for the CIA. You no. worked for the FBI. No, never worked for the agency. But, um, you know, fortunately for us, it doesn't take away from the narrative. It doesn't take away from the story. I mean, people know uh, that I testified, and my statement is the only statement under oath uh, about what happened with Abu Zubaydah. Uh, I testified at the Senate on that. They know my position on uh, the interrogation of Abu Zubaydah. They know the enhanced interrogation techniques and what I believe that they didn't work. Um, and that's what I'm trying to say in the book. And that's the narrative that I'm putting in the book. And uh, uh, I believe all the threats that's mentioned in the book uh, are threats that's already in public domain. And all the things that uh, have been redacted, mostly narrative rather than facts. In terms of the other people who have talked about the Abu Zubaydah interrogation, it is one of these things that is discussed by many, many, many politicians, including then President of the United States, George W. Bush, in 2006, sure. and justifying enhanced interrogation techniques. How did you get Abu Zubaydah to tell you that Khalid Sheikh Mohammed was mastermind of 9-11? And then how did Abu Zubaydah end up getting waterboarded dozens of times? Well, this is interesting because, and I, and I actually I testified about this, that we knew that Khalid Sheikh Mohammed was a mastermind of 9-11 way before enhanced interrogation techniques were even applied. We knew that Khalid Sheikh Mohammed was a mastermind of 9-11 in April of 2002 before the, the contractors even set a foot in the undisclosed location of where we were. Mm. So uh, just to basically read later that people are claiming uh, it was waterboarding that produced the information that led us to identify Khalid Sheikh Mohammed as a mastermind is totally wrong. And unfortunately, the same thing with Padilla, you know, uh, the alleged dirty bomber, even though I believe he's a brain surgery away from being a dirty bomber, but that's a different story. Uh, they claimed that it was waterboarding that caused Zubaydah, and you can see that clearly in Stephen Bradbury memo on the OLC, Office okay. of Legal Counsel memo, they claim that waterboarding uh, produced the information that led us to Padilla. Well, you know, waterboarding did not start until August of 2002, a couple of weeks before, but still, you know, July, August of 2002. Uh, Mr. Padilla was in custody after an international manhunt in May of 2002. So unless you have a time machine, you're having a problem, you know, with with keeping the 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 the, the timeline straight. And when when the enhanced interrogation techniques and waterboarding were happening to Abu Zubaydah, you called FBI headquarters in Washington to say yes. uh, to say either I leave or I'll arrest him. Were you talking about <laughs> arresting the guy who was doing the enhanced I, interrogation I, I techniques? Was, I was angry, I guess. But the FBI told you to leave. Yeah saying that we don't do those kinds of tactics. We don't do these kind of things. Uh, the order came from Director Mueller, and uh, the FBI since then, uh, as an agency, did not get involved in any of the so-called special techniques that were applied on some of the high-value detainees. We'll be right back with more uh, from Ali Soufan, his landmark new book, Black Banners, just out today. We'll be right back with him in just a moment.